standoff right in front of there are several police cars that are blocking the road right there and more people that are standing there with their signs with their chanting Ryan Kruger and now Hope one Ford interesting on thing that we did see tonight. literally right next to this area there are restaurants and there are people just sitting on the patio eating like it's a normal Friday night out which is uh, an unusual scene all right, we're going to take you back to Chopper, but before we pull away from Ryan, I did want to bring attention to the fact that a woman was sitting in the middle of the road with a her protest sign on her walker. When we say people from all walks of life have joined this, all races, people with disabilities, people who had to come out with walkers, let us not forget a part of the scene that you are seeing is the amount of masks that are there because this is happening in the midst of a global pandemic. People saying nothing could stop them from hitting the streets and protesting today, not even a pandemic. Centennial Olympic Park on the left, which is where we saw Ryan. So this scene has really spread out and taken over downtown Atlanta. So you have to have police officers doing traffic, police officers manning the crowd, being stretched to the limit as the crowd is much bigger than them. Back to the ground right now with Hope Ford in the midst of the crowd. Hope, what can you tell us right now? Okay, so uh, we, we did manage to make it past uh, the, the part of the crowd that kind of was cl uh, cluttered around some of the officers. It seems to be pretty calm in that area right now, although a couple of people did start throwing water bottles at the at the police cars. And right now we're just kind of walking down. The protest seems to kind of split. So there's a lot of people, as you'll see right in front of you, that are on this area um, going towards the CNN deck. And behind us, there's another huge group of people that you saw uh, probably right behind Ryan. So we're walking down here right now to kind of see what's going on. Right now there's not a whole lot of chanting. There are some people who are just kind of sitting down. There are a lot of people who are recording, but it seems over here, again, next to the CNN deck, that there is another little cluster that I've kind of circled around something, and we're trying to get a little bit closer to that to see what's happening over there. Some people seem completely unbothered. They're just kind of walking by. Oh. Okay, so we do have someone on a megaphone right now. We're going to pop back over now to so Chopper while Hope Ford gets kind of to a safer location. We're going to pop out of Hope Ford right now, making sure she gets to a safer location as tension was starting to rise. Here is what is the most telling. Every time we go back to this shot, this standoff remains here with the largest crowd that we've seen gathered going face to face with the police officers right out in front of CNN Center. And it looks like no one is budging. Initially, we saw that crowd pushing the police officers back. They were the ones walking backwards. Look at the police officers, some in their regular uniforms and some with the fluorescent uh, uniforms on at the top, which were the officers that we saw on their bikes. It doesn't matter which way you cut it. The crowd is indeed outnumbering the amount of officers, even the ones that we have being surrounded there on the roof that are watching the situation from above there at that deck across from the CNN Center. It looks like it is just merely a standoff at this point. We don't see any shoving, any pushing or any blows being exchanged as we have in the last hour here. So maybe this is calming down and the demonstrators are just holding their ground and not moving away from the scene. But as you saw from Hope and Ryan, they're in two totally different spots. So this protest is not just one location now. It has been divided into multiple, multiple pockets of downtown just surrounding that entire perimeter. Jeff Hullinger joining us now. Jeff, you have been in this city for years covering news in Atlanta. What are you thinking about what you're seeing right now? Well, I think there is uh, some familiarity if if you follow uh, the civil unrest and the civil protesting that we have seen over the last uh, six or seven years involving uh, police brutality that uh, certainly has 
has uh, touched so many in Atlanta. I'm thinking about Ferguson and the protests in downtown Atlanta after Ferguson began in a somewhat of a similar way where it began with protesters who were marching and then walking around downtown. And much like this, it seemed to grow in mass as time progressed. And that's what we certainly are seeing here. It began very small uh, about four o'clock, approximately two hours ago, but it certainly has grown uh, in the past 120 minutes. And we have seen this crowd uh, now gather in front of the CNN Center initially uh, police were in control of this and, and certainly it would appear that they are as now. But protesters, uh, as you have mentioned, now outnumbering the police. And that crowd has, has certainly now just sort of gathered and they're not moving for the most part, though some have split off and are going to other locations. So we'll see how this evolves, certainly in the minutes and the hours ahead. We turned some video around from you earlier there. Let's get to that where we are seeing that scene. This is where the drama started to unfold and where the temperature really went up quite a few notches out there with the pushing and the shoving of the officers and the protesters meeting one another with water bottles flying out there. And as a result of this, we saw the first arrest also being made out here on the scene and people standing on top of cars and waving their signs and putting their hands up. And in this digital age, we know a lot of them are recording, which is the source of a lot of these emotions is what we see that has been recorded from similar scenes like this, Jeff. Well, and, and from past marches, we have seen um, you know, city government, I'm, I'm thinking of Mayor Kasim Reed when he was in office and, and uh, there were a number of protests that were popping up. His, his belief and his interaction with Atlanta police, I think really held off a, a lot of violence perhaps that, that certainly could have been sparked and that giving protesters a sense to protest, to voice their disapproval, their unhappiness, with justice, no, uh, you know, certainly no justice, no peace, which is a chant. And there was the freedom in marches that we have seen prior where they have been allowed to express themselves. And there has not been that, that sort of confluence of police that we've seen in other cities, uh, sometimes that have brought on a, a certain confluence of, of violence in those cities. In Atlanta, we have seen something different where protest has been allowed, voices have been able to be heard, and those protests for the most part have been nonviolent. And Cheryl, we are really seeing the diversity of this crowd and the magnitude and especially mm -hmm. the young people. I know you think about your kids a lot as they're getting older and becoming teens and we're seeing their demographics starting to be on the front lines of stuff like this. You know, I really noticed that, Aisha. This is a young crowd uh, out there for sure. And in that left-hand box, it really is a striking image of the number of protesters in that line of police. And I keep thinking back to what Chief Shields told us today, just hours before this protest was going to start, that she had talked to all of her officers saying that the goal was to avoid any violence in the demonstrations, to give the protesters some room uh, to, to share their feelings, to express the change that they want to see and to have a place to gather. And she, she told her officers, you have to understand the anger and you have to put yourself in their shoes. So knowing sort of that context to the conversations that were had with all of these officers before the protest started, today and as we've seen some of those scuffles break out they have stopped relatively quickly and even now you know in the last half hour since we saw that confrontation start to heat up you know things have maintained fairly uh, stable in that time very interesting to hear the chief really be uh, straight up with her officers and really talking very boldly about the mistakes she believes that have been made in Minneapolis with her police department and I think the calmness of this does reflect on the leadership of Chief Shields and it speaks to exactly what she said and I think that we are seeing that here being reflected that this has not reached such an intense level of any form of violence. It seems that the crowd is being allowed to occupy the space that they have and they did intertwine quite a few times, 
But Jeff, you know, we saw some crazy images last night and we are not seeing that right now. We have to give perspective to that. Well, we also have to be mindful that the evening is still young and that too, uh, you know, we will keep an eye on these crowds mm -hmm. as they grow and, and oftentimes as we have seen again, and we're using the past as a reference here, the near past of what we have seen in these that, you know, crowds grow at night and sometimes uh, certainly uh, things can become heated. So the hope, the wish, the desire certainly among Atlanta government, among police, among fire is that these protests will stay as they are now and that is certainly peaceful. And we do see now that that crowd that's lined up face to face with the officers here uh, chanting to the officers and for our crews, you see that we have them spaced out a little bit or a lot away from the thick of it so that they're able to move about uh, safely. We see Ryan Kruger there in a very uh, remote space where he is able to keep his distance safely. And I can't stop reiterating, Jeff, this is all going on. And Cheryl, we thought we were talking about COVID-19 mm -hmm. all day and things can change so fast. And it's just the response to what is going on. Despite a pandemic, people say they will have their voices heard in the name of action and change. Well, certainly, I, th I think also uh, yeah, social media see. plays a very heavy role into this as we have seen so much mm -hmm. in Minneapolis and we have seen a lot in Louisville as well as Denver. I think uh, these sorts of things, uh, the, the greater sense of community in the United States is to become involved in this as well. And I think you're seeing that in major cities all across the country.